All right, so this, of course, is the big moment in American politics. We are halfway through Joe Biden's presidency, and it remains to be interesting as to what the American people, of course, think about the American president's performance, and this will be a clear indicator. Now, according to the early trends that are coming in, there seems to be a bit of an early lead that the Republicans have stolen over the Democrats. The states have just started declaring their results, and the GOP, the grand old party of American politics, appears to have stolen a lead. In the latest, the incumbent Florida governor has now managed to hold on to his seat. Ron DeSantis is now tipped for a potential candidacy for the 2024 presidential elections. He is, of course, seen as a bit of a rising star in America's political right. And former President Donald Trump has flown to his home state of Florida to even root for him. But cracks between the two are pretty evident. Now, during one of Donald Trump's rallies, he even called the governor Ron de Sanctimonium. And these, of course, are live visuals from Florida. It is expected that Ron DeSantis could, of course, come forth and address his followers. It remains to be seen as to what he is likely to say. Because remember, this, of course, is a very crucial state, Florida. And Ron DeSantis also will have implications far beyond this midterm elections. Because he is quite clearly someone who is in the running for the 2024 presidency as well. And he could be one of the rivals that Donald Trump will have to overcome to, in fact, put forth his bid to contend in the presidential elections in two years' time from now. The polls have closed in some states. The 2022 midterm elections are shaping up to be the most consequential in America's history, with control of the Congress and also of the Senate at stake. All 435 seats in the House and 35 of the 100 seats in the Senate are now on the line. Dozens of governorships, secretaries of states and attorney general are also on the ballot. The midterm elections will determine the future of American President Joe Biden's agenda. Whether he'll have the heft and the control of the American legislators is, of course, the big question. Because remember, without the control of the Congress and the Senate, Joe Biden will not be able to push through his agenda for the rest of his presidency. Now, this also is going to be a test of the viability of another White House run by Donald Trump as well. That, of course, is another aspect that is being looked at in these midterm elections. Now, according to data from the U.S. Election Project, more than 42 million Americans have voted ahead of the election day, either by more mail or by in-person voting. Meanwhile, with the polls opening across the country, there have been no reports of any widespread problems with the ballots. Long lines or voter intimidation have not been reported from pretty much any of the polling stations. However, there were problems with dozens of electronic vote counting machines in the battleground state of Arizona. And these electronic vote counting machines were seized upon by the former Republican President Donald Trump and his followers who claimed that it was evidence of election fraud by the Democrats. Listen in. There's a lot of bad things going on. Stay online. Do not leave. I know you don't want to be there as long as they're going to try and force you. They want to delay you out of voting. And you cannot let them delay you out of voting. So to the people of Arizona in particular, because that's the one that's come up right now, stay online. Don't leave. Already a lot of people have left. And it's very, very unfair what's going on. Maricopa County, don't leave. Stay there. All right, now to give us more insights in terms of what, of course, is expected in these very crucial midterm elections, we are being joined by our correspondent Susan Terani, who's, of course, joining us live on this broadcast. We're also being joined by Jessica Stone, who is also a VOA reporter, and she's joining us live from Washington. And we are also being joined by Dr. Christina Dragomir, who's a political commentator and author who's joining us live from New York. But Susan, let me in fact begin by asking you this. We are in, it appears, very familiar terrain. Because what we've heard from Donald Trump is an allegation of election fraud. Is there any basis for what Donald Trump has in fact come forth and said? Questioning the accuracy and how machines work uh, 
is not an issue uh, in any election cycle. It's part of the democratic system. And individuals in Maricopa County, Arizona, were standing in line. They tried to cast their ballots. And for whatever reason, these machines had problems and they weren't able to cast their ballots. So they turned around and left. Uh, there has been problems with these machines in the past. Uh, and both sides of the political spectrum have raised concerns about voter machines, you know, having problems. Even Politico, just on the eve of the election, said that these machines need to be uh, inspected. Sometimes there, you know, it causes delays, ink runs out. There was another case in Pennsylvania as well. So what happens is, well, Donald Trump makes statements uh, because he's concerned about his supporters. The Republican Party is concerned. But a greater problem when problems like these with machines, whether or not they're widespread or not, what happens is a wide uh, range or a sector of the population may end up questioning the result of the election. So, you know, this is a problem that ultimately needs to be addressed. This is not a Donald Trump problem. This is a problem that needs to be addressed with these machines. Now, whether or not politicians uh, decide to bank on them for their political gains, you know, that's another conversation. Absolutely indeed. And just to persist on this, Susan, a little bit further, because this, of course, is what Donald Trump has, in fact, gone down stating that the Republican voters should still remain in the line. So in the event that some of these electronic voting machines do not work, so what is the procedure that kicks in? Do these voters then stick around and wait for these voting machines to in fact be repaired and then vote or what happens? Well, in some cases, they wait until the voting machines get repaired. In other cases, they get paper ballots um, and they fill them out. Um, and then, you know, they have to be counted. In some other cases, you know, then it has to go, uh, you know, towards another stage where, you know, they would fall into those uh, kind of mail-in ballot kind of uh, departments. It gets murky. And that's where the problem arises, is people uh, try to, people start to question what happens to their vote. You know, was the machine functioning accurately? When I gave that paper ballot, you know, did it really count? And, you know, these are the issues that arise and this is where you know both parties then politically try to bank one way or the other on um, the efficiency and accuracy of our election system which for the most part is extremely accurate and should be safe because that's one of the right. pillars uh, of the democratic system that we have here in the United States right absolutely indeed Susan do continue to stay on with this let me bring in Jessica Stone of the VOA who's also joining us live from Washington DC now Jessica the results are in fact beginning to come in controversies aside, but it is, it appears, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, who has now won his re-election. Tell us more in terms of how crucial this is, and also considering that he is also in the running for the presidency probably in 2024. This is a very crucial result, isn't it? Well, I think it was largely expected that he would win the governorship, but uh, you're already seeing the attacks coming uh, at him from President, uh, former President Donald Trump, who said he could have been more gracious when I gave him that uh, that endorsement um, and, and things of that nature. So th these two have been picking at each other and distancing themselves from each other uh, for the last few weeks, if not months. Um, and you've seen this growing apart. Uh, particularly because DeSantis is going to need to uh, distance himself from President Trump in some quarters and also just not completely divorce himself from the Trump voter who says, I was not heard in the American electoral process until Donald Trump showed up. So in order to win, as we saw in my state of Virginia, um, if you're in a large, especially if you're in a largely blue state, a largely Democratic state, uh, Glenn Youngkin is a Republican governor that just won and sort of set the mold up uh, to run with the endorsement of President Trump, but not to fully embrace President Trump and all of the conspiracy theories that he espouses, uh, and be able to keep the voters engaged that are Trump voters, but not alienate the voters that want to vote on m more moderate issues, kitchen table issues, we call them, right? The, right? the economy, education, things of that nature. But I want to circle back to what you were asking, Susan, if I could, for just a moment. Mm -hmm. uh, part of the reaction of the U.S. electoral system to the 
the allegations of voter fraud, Mohammed, has been that we are going to paper. We are going back to paper. And so there is redundancy in nearly every polling location in the country that if your vote is tabulated electronically, you still have a paper ballot that can be counted. So rest assured that most there's been a lot of learning going on and a lot of fail-safes improved in the interim uh, in terms of how to deal with these kinds of allegations. There are paper ballots to be counted, uh, and there are there are lawsuits to be filed, and that is what the, that is really the stage we are at now. We are going to see, we've already seen in the state of Pennsylvania where there's a very close, a close and consequential Senate race, that there has already been a lawsuit filed by the Fetterman campaign, the Democrat who is running in that race in order to count additional ballots. He's asking to count ballots that are mail-ins, uh, and we're going to see additional lawsuits. We've already got 100 across the country, even before we started counting votes. So that is the stage we're in now where we will litigate the vote in court. Absolutely, indeed, because that, that of course, will be a part of the voting process. And and as you pointed out, that this, this of course, will be a discussion which, you know, people will continue to have in different parts of the world. These electronic voting machines are used sometimes. These these machines may throw up a few glitches, which, which may result in votes not getting registered. And what is the solution for this is, of course, something that uh, different democracies will have to work through in terms of how they wish to proceed with their voting system. Now, uh, we are also joined by Dr. Christina Dragomir, who is a political commentator and author, and she's joining us live from New York. Now, Dr. Dragomir, this is a crucial election for Joe Biden's presidency. We are midway through his presidency. It is 2022 November. In two years' time, he will, of course, would have been done with his presidency. But this, in many ways, is also a reflection of what has happened so far. And many of the voters who, after they've cast their vote, have been asked what was the most crucial issue. They've, in fact, come out and said that these are essentially issues of cost of living crisis and, and a few of these other aspects that they have to deal with pretty much on a day-to-day -day basis. And from the early indicators that are coming in, it is not looking good for Joe Biden to retain control of the American legislature to push through his agenda, doesn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely, Mohammed. Thank you for for the um, uh, for presenting this. So, as my my colleagues have also stated, this is not really unexpected. The economy is going in a direction that it's felt by so many of the Americans and people around the world, and people are reacting to this. The very high inflation is something that is on the mind and. On the part, and it's feeling on the pockets of the American people. As a result of it, this midterm election will definitely show this in um, in its results. So this is definitely this is definitely happening. However, what we also have to keep in mind is that um, inflation is not only within the United States. It's something that is globally um, uh, that it needs to be globally addressed. And this is not something that Joe Biden or the Congress of, of United States can address single handedly. But nevertheless, the voters are seeing this as a vote on the Congress and on President on President Biden. However, what is important to know is that whoever is going to win um, on Congress, they would still have to deal with inflation. They would still have to deal with very high prices of gas because of the global um, situation. They would have to deal with a very problematic economy. So this is not the solution to this, but this is the beginning of rethinking about this in a very different way. However, what I would also like to, to mention, different from my colleagues, to say that, well, we are very concerned about the, about the process of elections and trying to ensure that everything goes well. I would like to also say that um, the Republican contenders of the elections have already predicted that the elections will not be fair before the votes were forecasted. So really caution right. your viewers and the audience about the process of election and how this is actually manipulated in different ways by different people and how this kind of agenda is put forward by um, by uh, the people who are running for elections right now and how they are preparing the terrain for the 2024 elections as well. So this is a very complex process that really needs to be thought out very clearly and put within its particular context context of where it's happening right. and address it particularly when it's happening. Absolutely indeed, uh, Dr. Drongman. I think you've, you've hit the nail on the head because some of this is, is also essentially just election rhetoric. You know, people coming forth and claiming that probably the elections are not going to be fair. This, this is something that you hear about 
in elections, not just in the United States, in a lot of other countries around the world in democracies. But this is a process that needs to be foolproof because when voters cast their vote, they must have the confidence that their vote is counted and it is accounted for. And that, that of course, is, is something which needs to be addressed. Uh, I request Dr. Drogomir and also to Susan Tehrani and Jessica Stone to stay on with us because this, of course, is a crucial election result in America that we are tracking. But let's also take a look at the issues which have, in fact, been on top of the voters' minds in America. Now, inflation, as we discussed, is a crucial aspect in terms of what will determine as to which way the Americans would have voted. Another key issue is that of abortion. It's about the reproductive rights of women in the United States of America. And this has also been a crucial issue, which is determined as to which way the Americans would have voted. Joe Biden has made his intention very clear, but will he, of course, have a majority in the American legislature to push through his agenda? That, of course, is the big question. Now, the turnout has been much more impressive than what has been anticipated. It is being seen as a sign of how crucial this year's midterm elections has become. So let's take a look at these issues one by one. Let's start with inflation. An Associated Press poll has said that nearly eight out of ten Americans who are voting are voting for the economy. They feel that the economy of America is in a bad state. A third of the voters have described their families as falling behind financially. Meanwhile, six in ten voters say that their vote has been impacted by the rise in petrol prices. And remember, one of the key reasons for this rise in inflation, the cost of living crisis, is also because of this Russian invasion of Ukraine, which has just made the energy prices go through the roof. Now, at this moment, we should also tell our viewers that these are still early exit polls. It is in some places that results have started to trickle in, but these are predominantly at this point of time, the votes are being counted, and at this point of time, these are leads and trends which, which we are looking at. The money is, of course, on top of the mind for the Americans. This is expected to hurt the Democrats the most because a blue government sits in the White House. We've got to do something to reverse the inflationary trend that, uh, you know, in, the Democrats are spending out of control. Congress is spending out of control. That needs to come back in line. Of course, inflation, the economy, prices are horrendous. I thought I was going to be able to retire this year, and I'm going to have to wait another year. So it, it's back. Meanwhile, in Kentucky, which has been a blue state, the fear of a Republican introducing restrictions on abortion rights is, of course, bringing people out to vote. Kentucky has one of the earliest poll close times in the country, and the state counts pretty quickly as well. So we should be able to get a result from this state in a few hours from now. Which party the people choose, of course, will be found. And what will be the issue? Will abortion rights, of the right to a safe medically assisted abortion for women, is this going to be the top agenda in this state? Is, of course, what we'll find out. As a, a pro-lifer and a Democrat, you know, I believe in life. Once the heartbeat is detected, you're taking another life. And there's medical reasons why, because that uh, life has a totally different DNA than the mother. So I'm going to fight for the life that's in the womb as well as lives that are out here now walking around. Uh, probably the number one thing is reproductive freedom. Um, I'm looking for a full Democratic majority that will uphold Roe v. Wade, um, as well as candidates that will uh, respect the results of the election. Meanwhile, there are some results which are beginning to come in. The U.S. state of Massachusetts, interestingly, has elected the Democrat Maura Healey as America's first openly lesbian governor. Now, these are reports um, on the basis of local media reports. Now, Maura Healey is said to be 51 years old and has managed to flip the seat from the Republicans. This, of course, is going to be a big, big result for the Democrats. But this is, remember, one among the states. Which, which, of course, has now been won by the Democrats. And we'll get you more updates as they emerge as voting, of course, proceeds. Uh, meanwhile, we still have Dr. Christina Drogomir with us. Uh, Dr. Drogomir, this, this is something which, you know, people are looking at from around the world. The United States of America calls itself the leader of the free world. But the issue of reproductive rights of women, the issue of a safe medically assisted abortion, is an extremely polarizing issue in the United States. Tell us a bit about how crucial is, is this issue likely to play out in terms of the midterm elections. How many people across the United States 
will be coming out with this being as their biggest issue. Okay, there seems to be a bit of a line issue with the line with Dr. Drogomir. We'll try fix that audio issue with her. But Dr. Drogomir, uh, if you can hear me, the question that I was asking you was about the importance of abortion rights, the reproductive rights for women in the United States of America. What we are looking after the Joe versus Wade judgment being overturned within the United States is that there are a number of states, predominantly red states, who have come forth and said that they will be restricting the right for a safe medically assisted abortion for women. So this is playing a big role in this election, in the midterm elections. Tell us how crucial is the right of abortion in American politics? Thank you, Mohammed. So first of all, I would like to redefine this issue because it depends on which side of the political uh, spectrum one is situated, how the issue is being divided. So um, it's divided either as abortion rights or pro-life or reproductive rights for all people who are able to bear to bear children. And I think that's very important to see that because once we understand that, we are able to see very easily which side of the, um, of the equation people are situating themselves in. So I think that that's a really important way of looking at this. Secondly, Democrats were very optimistic early on in the election process, thinking that this is going to galvanize people, especially women, and it's going to bring them to the polls to actually vote for the Democratic Party, who will be more likely to support their reproductive rights. Um, they had um, candidates that were putting this on their agenda, on the platform, for people to vote on. However, in spite of the fact that this is going to be influencing the life of the people within United States for decades to come, it turns out that Americans were much more interested in the inflation, in the right. uh, in the price that they are paying, they are pay, they are paying at the gas pump rather than the reproductive rights. So right. um, this is something for all of us to see because this is not panning out as Democrats were hoping that will will come out. I think one race that will be particularly Particularly interesting for us to look at will be the gubernatorial race within Oklahoma, because Oklahoma State has one of the most restric restrictive um, reproductive rights laws, with um, abortions being almost um, entirely illegal. So that would be really interesting to see in a state that is so restrictive, how are the politics going to pan out and what is the success that Democrats will have? Absolutely, indeed, Dr. Drogomir. That, that, of course, is, is of course a big question, is it not? What is driving the Americans to vote for a particular candidate on basis of how their life will be import, impacted once they elect the political leaders that they do? Because that, that, of course, is something very crucial and fundamental. And reproductive rights is as fundamental as it gets. But we're completely out of time. Thank you very much, indeed, to Dr. Drogomir, to Susan Tehrani, and also to Jessica Stone for joining us on this broadcast and for getting us all those updates there. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.